Hi guys, welcome to today's video and it is the horrible present perfect. I'm doing this because many of you have sent me private messages saying please do present perfect, please do it. Some grammar books don't explain it very well, some teachers definitely don't explain it very well and I've explained it a million times. I hate teaching it mainly because many students in you know various countries don't have a present perfect structure in their language. So to get them to use this freely is a very difficult and long task. Don't expect to use it properly immediately. It takes many, many years, a lot of practice, but you will. So we can start now. Let's have a look. We have a present perfect. I've drawn this very nice sort of chart here with past, future, now, and some very strange lines, which I will explain in a minute to sort of help you understand what this is about. Now we've got the first one I've chosen because you'll find that a lot of the sort of rules, they kind of interconnect, to be honest. But we'll sort of try to separate them a little bit to make it a bit easier. The first one is no definite time. Now that's the, one of the main points of the present perfect. There is no definite time about it. Uh, we know that it's something that started in the past. We don't know when. Unlike the past simple, which is quite specific, we use sort of time words with the past simple, like last week or yesterday. But the present perfect, I can say, I've seen a film. And that's enough. We don't have any time words, but we know it's sometime in the past, which leads to the present. And that's the whole thing about the present perfect, because it is a present tense, because it is connected to now, as I will show you. So when we talk about no definite time, I can say I've missed the train. Maybe it could be something that I've done recently. It wouldn't be a long ago, but it, there has to be some connection to the present. So maybe I've missed the train and I'm feeling a bit lonely now. We can also often use this with the word just, which means that something happened just a moment ago. Uh, so the present perfect can be something that finished very recently with a connection to the present. So if I said, I've just seen a ghost and now I'm scared. Um, I'll explain this sort of now, even though I'll do a proper video about the present perfect and past simple. If I said, I saw a ghost, uh, then of course, maybe I'm not scared now. The whole process is finished, but because it's linked to the present, like here, there must be some present results. So I've seen a ghost and now I filled my pants. We've got unfinished time. Now this one is very important for the present perfect. If I say I've had three car accidents or uh, I've been involved in car accidents three times, uh, then we use present perfect. Now, for example, if you look at my chart here, I've got these little dots, okay, like that. And the reason we say unfinished time, as you can see, maybe something starts in the past and even though maybe I've had like three or four times, it can still happen in the future. We see this as unfinished. So if I say I've had three car accidents, because I'm a shit driver, maybe I'll have another three accidents in the future, or maybe I'll die, who knows? Uh, quite often you can ask a question with how many times, like in your life, plus present perfect. How many times have you had a car accident? How many times have you been to England? How many times have you visited your parents? over the last year, for example. I can also say John has eaten 100 Big Macs. So if you look here, one, two, three, four to 99, 100, maybe 101, 102, 103. So it's unfinished time. It continues into the present and future. Um, one of the good things to remember this, I'll give you a good example that I use to teach my students. So imagine that like I'm some old man, well, I'm old now, but when I'm really old, I'm lying in bed and I have 30 seconds before I die. Excuse the horrible example, but that's how I teach. And imagine I say, okay, uh, I was in England five times and I had so much fun. That's correct English because there's 30 seconds left and I do have not had the chance to go to the airport, to get on a plane and fly to England and back in 30 seconds. It's impossible. So I need to use my logic and choose the past simple because there's no chance the future can happen. But now as a 40 year old man, if I say I have been to England five times, even though it's my home, uh, I've been to England five times, I have the chance to go again and again and again. So if I'm on my deathbed and I say I have been to England five times and I have 30 seconds before I die, it's wrong. I can't say that. Like 30 seconds, like 29, 20, I've been to England five times. No, wrong English, Paul. You have no chance to go again. You've got 10 seconds left. Okay, do you understand what I mean? So when you choose the present perfect or the past symbol, you have to think, is the time finished or can it continue into the future? If yes, present perfect. We have here the next one, result in the present. 
This is an interesting one. So quite often when we announce information, uh, we often use the present perfect. But there must be a link in the present. If there's no link in the present, then it's past simple. So if I say, I've broken my leg, I can say a sort of present tense, like example, and now it hurts. If I say, John has pissed himself, uh, the result is, and now it smells. So here we go, if you look at this, okay, we say, I've broken my leg, and now it hurts. John has pissed himself, finished. The result is, and now he really smells. Now, again, comparing the past simple, but I'll do a special video with lots of examples. If I say, I broke my leg, then this would not be correct. If I say, I broke my leg, that could have been a long time ago, and now it's fine. Okay, that's the difference. If I say, John pissed himself, well, when? I need more information with the past simple. John pissed himself when we were five years old at school. Ah, so he doesn't smell now. He's fine and clean. Okay, then we go to the last one, state verbs. Now, state verbs, you should know this, and again, I'll do a video on these. State verbs are verbs that can't be in a continuous form. So, ing, sometimes they can, with some exceptions. I'll explain those later as well. And so, if I say, for example, like, you know, that for five years, we often think that with for and since and all, we must use present perfect continuous. But again, the problem is, is known can't be in a continuous form, so we need to make it uh, into a present perfect. So I can't say, I have been knowing John for five years. If a student said that, bleh. So therefore, we make it present perfect, I've known John for five years. And again, there are a lot of stated verbs that work like this, okay? Now that is quite a simple introduction to the present perfect. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a video uh, immediately after this where we compare lots of present perfect and past simple structures plus a few other bits and pieces for you, okay? Hope that was useful. Please like, please subscribe, invite your friends, your cats and your dogs. Okay, have a good day.